Thank you so much to the Reporters Committee. I mean, if it weren't for you and Lucy Dalglish, I'd probably be a lawyer for a hedge fund that owns media organizations, <laughs> and not at a media organization, so thank you for that. Um, I have so many mentors in the room that I want to thank. Of course, David McCraw, David Schultz, Kate Bolger, Rachel Strom, Nathan Siegel, Allison Lucas, who I work with every day at BuzzFeed. Um, I have to thank my colleagues at BuzzFeed. I do pay them to cheer for me, so that's why that happened. Um, especially Ben Smith, who personally ensures that every single day I'm not bored. Uh, my family, my friends, so many people in the room, above all, my husband, Nana Yansu, who makes me coffee every morning, so really, you should thank him too. I'd also like to thank my grandmother, who is the reason that I'm an attorney, and if you'll allow me, I'd like to share with you a story about her. It's about a question that you might have asked yourself this morning. What am I gonna wear? What am I gonna wear is not always a profound question, but it was a very important one this particular Karachi evening. Benazir Bhutto had nominated my grandmother to be the first woman justice on the High Court of Pakistan. The swearing-in ceremony was the next day. On her bed, she had two options. One option was a shalwar kameez, a white tunic and trousers commonly worn by men and women, topped with a black blazer, which is pretty much the normal outfit of attorneys in that country. On the other hand, she had a white sari, which she is what she wanted to wear. But so the thing is that my grandmother was an unflinching advocate for women's rights, and she had the fatwas against her and the death threats to prove it. So wearing that type of garment might well be the type of thing that's more trouble than it's worth. And so she stood there in front of her bed thinking, do I try to blend in, or do I choose to stand out more than I already do? Which is really another way of asking yourself, do I choose, even in a small way, to challenge the way things are? Now, I don't have to tell this room that in the last 486 days, not that anyone's counting, we have seen the status quo change dramatically. But as some institutions crumble and others reshape themselves, one light amidst the darkness is the number of voices who are no, who are no longer willing to accept the way things have been. Think of the people who will no longer suffer sexual abuse and sexual assault in silence. Think of the families in Chicago that knew their loved ones were innocent. Melissa Segura of BuzzFeed pieced together these stories painstakingly, realizing that many of the convictions led back to one dirty cop. Because of her reporting, nine men walk free today. Think of Basim Razo, who suffered an unimaginable tragedy when a drone strike murdered his family and destroyed his home. He could have suffered in silence, but he sought to pursue justice. And Azmat Khan and Anand Gopal chose to share with us the stories of the unnamed and uncounted victims of America's war in Iraq. All of these are momentous stories, but remember that they follow a parade of small choices. They follow someone deciding to pick up the phone, someone else returning the call, not ignoring a cryptic email, filing a FOIA request, an editor saying, okay, fine, take another day, a lawyer saying, it's risky, but we'll try to make it work. A small choice need not be a small choice. It might just be the first step to something much larger. As a media lawyer, I fight to make sure that choices, big and small, are not marred by unnecessary fear. I work so reporters can tell the stories, including the stories that confront power, even when they are uncomfortable or inconvenient or might anger an angry oligarch or three. <laughs> I'm just saying. What this requires personally is that I choose to fight even when my voicemail is full of vitriotic trolls who say, you can't be a Muslim and also defend the Constitution. Or when free speech, a thing I care about so dearly, has been weaponized into the rallying cry of people who think that my family of immigrants should go home when we are home. 
What this might mean for all of us is instead of just caring about the First Amendment rights of white supremacists and bigoted cake bakers, we care about those who have economic boycotts or the J20 protesters or students who are suspended for taking a knee or incarcerated people who can't receive books while they're in prison. Everyone chooses to fight their own way. And part of the deep honor of getting this award from the Reporters Committee tonight is that they choose to fight for us every single day. So thank you for that. For those of you wondering about my grandmother, she decided to wear the sari. It was a small choice, sure, but it signaled to others that she was willing to do things differently. She kept that promise. On the bench, she remained an ardent advocate of women's rights, children's rights, and the rights of religious minorities in the country. Off the bench, she drafted a bill, a landmark transgender rights bill that was finally just passed into law two weeks ago. This award is for her, and inspired by all of you in this room, I choose to try and follow in her footsteps. Thank you.